What's going on, Cornerstone Online? We are so glad that you are joining us today. It is November, which means Thanksgiving is coming up, which is actually my favorite holiday, even more than Christmas, which I know is a little bit unpopular, but I also like love football, food, and like falling asleep on the couch. But I would love to know what your favorite Thanksgiving tradition is. And so if you're watching us live, I'd love for you to put that in the chat, and interact with each other. But if you're watching the later on demand, put it in the comments below. What is your favorite Thanksgiving tradition? Hey, once again, we are so glad you're joining us. Let's sing some worship together.
Hey, once again, thank you so much for joining us for Cornerstone Online. My name is Aaron, if I haven't already said that, and I'm so glad that you are here. One of the things that we wanna make sure is that you get connected here at Cornerstone. We're all about connecting people to Jesus for transformed lives. We wanna to get to know you. We wanna know your name and pray for you and get you connected here at Cornerstone. And so if you are new, we would love if you're watching live to put I'm new in the chat right now, or you can text connect to this number, or you can see on the screen right now, there is a QR code that you can take a picture of with your smartphone. It is just a way for you to get prayed for, to get connected better here at Cornerstone. 
Hey, and if you have been blessed by Cornerstone Online or Cornerstone in any way, and if you call yourself a member here, we would love to invite you to give. God calls us to give a tithe entrusting it to him to give back to the kingdom. And so if you call Cornerstone home or you've been blessed by the ministry, you can take a picture of this QR code and be able to do our online giving. Well, other than that, we are in week number five of our series, Unbelievable. Well, hello everybody, welcome once again. Thanks for joining us online today. If you're brand new to Cornerstone, we're so, so glad to have you. We'd sure love to connect with you more. I hope you'll take a minute and say hello. Let us know who you are. If you're attending with us regularly online, we're so glad to have you too. Let us know in the chat or via the connect card who you are so we can pray for you and whatever's going on in your life and say hello and connect with you. And if you're local in this area in the Metro East, but you're still unsure about COVID, so you're joining us online, man, we miss you. We are praying for you. So glad we get to connect via the internet. And some of us are local and we've really, it's not really a COVID thing anymore. We've just kind of grown comfortable with being online and being in our pajamas because pajamas are comfortable and that's great. But I want to just encourage you to join us. Join us in person. You're missing the party, okay? We're having a ball and worshiping together. There's something so special about us worshiping together as a church. There's so much value in that. And so I sure hope you'll make plans to be here next weekend so we can worship together. Now we're in a series called Unbelievable. We've been talking about the spiritual realm and the supernatural world. It's a world that we often miss if we're not looking for it. But when we do, we have a sense of realities of heaven and hell and the reality of death. And it changes the way we live. It changes the way we see things. And over the next two weeks, as we wrap up the, this series, Unbelievable, we're going to be talking about a very so sometimes confusing and exciting thing, the Holy Spirit. Next week, we're going to talk about spiritual gifts and how we can live in the Spirit, how God gifts us to live in the Spirit. But today, we're talking specifically about who is, what is the Holy Spirit? How are we supposed to understand this seemingly unbelievable presence of God that is thrown around as a phrase all the time in scripture and in church circles? Have you ever said to yourself, man, it sure would be better if Jesus were here? I mean, first of all, like Jesus would get rid of COVID. Look at he split, right? He would just be like, we're done. I just love to have Jesus nearby. Seriously, what could be better than having Jesus physically present on earth with us? So you could see him and you could hear his voice and you could touch him and you could listen to him teach and how he speaks, even though you don't understand anything he's saying because he speaks Aramaic and Greek, but you watch him do miracles. I mean, who thinks that would be totally awesome to be able to see Jesus? I know I do. I think that would be amazing. Now, it's not always a self-serving thing either. Oftentimes, especially when we're working through some area of life or faith, it just seems like it would be huge to have Jesus with us in the flesh. I have so many questions or, or you know, I just want to meet him or it sure would help me see things clearly. But did you know that according to Jesus himself, there is actually something way better than having him in person. In fact, in John chapter 16, verse seven, Jesus said it like this. He said, in fact, it's best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. So Jesus is saying, it's better for me to go because the advocate is coming. The advocate, now author J.D. Greer explains that passage and the others like it like this. He says this. He says, when Jesus was on earth, his miraculous work was contained to wherever he was at the moment. Now that he is in us, which is what he's talking about, the Holy Spirit, the advocate, his power is wherever we are. The spirit inside us is better than Jesus beside us. Now that's a huge statement, isn't it? That the spirit inside us is actually better than Jesus beside us, walking next to us. But that's exactly what Jesus is saying. 
Listen to his words. I'm going to read John chapter 16, verse 7 in a few different translations, a few different versions so that it starts to sink in. Just what a big deal. Having the Holy Spirit, Jesus inside us, really means. Jesus said it this way in the NIV. Very truly, I tell you, it's for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Here's how he says it in the message. He says, so let me say it again. This is the truth. It's better for you that I leave. If I don't leave, the friend won't come. But if I go, I'll send him to you. The NASB, New American Standard says, I tell you the truth, it's to your advantage that I go away. For I do not go away. If I don't go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. See, Jesus says that this advocate, this friend, this helper, it's better for us to have him in us, even if Jesus himself were here beside us, it's better to have the Holy Spirit, this thing we're talking about today. Now, we have a tendency to sometimes go to extremes on the Holy Spirit, and I don't know where you are on the spectrum. A lot of people either see him in every aspect of everything or kind of tend to forget that he's around. Okay, now, some, sort, some people sort of seem obsessed with all things Holy Spirit. They relate to him in kind of strange and mystical ways. And their experiences with the Spirit sort of seem to coincide with some emotionally charged moments. And you kind of wonder, was that the pizza or was it the Holy Spirit? We're not really sure, okay? They, they use phrases a lot like, God spoke to me, God gave me a word. And I'm not saying those things aren't real, but I do have kind of a funny story about that, okay? So imagine for a minute, there was a guy and he was dating a girl. And, you know, he's just so excited. He's praying, like, God, give me a sign. Should I marry this girl? And he's eating Cheerios. And he looks down into his bowl of Cheerios as he's imagining the idea of possibly proposing to her and praying about it. And he sees the Cheerios line up in such a way to spell out her initials. Thank you, Jesus. You have spoken through the Cheerios. Now, I'm not saying God can't use Cheerios. I think Cheerios are probably from God, okay? Sometimes people do other things like Bible roulette. Are you familiar with Bible roulette? Heard a story about a guy who, um, he was, you know, he was trying to figure out what he should do that day. He just said, God, I just want to honor you today. I just pray that you'll lead me through the power of the Spirit. So he just decided to play Bible roulette. Bible roulette is where you take your Bible and you kind of do it. Digital Bibles doesn't work the same way. This is old school, okay? You, know, you kind of flip your Bible and he just kind of opens it up and this is what you're supposed to hear from the Lord. And he opened the first time to Matthew chapter 27, verse 5, which says, Judas went out and hanged himself. He's like, well, that's... That's beginner's luck. I, I, that's not it, certainly, okay? So then he just did it again. Luke 10, 37. Jesus said, go and do likewise. He's like, no, 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 no way. That's certainly, that, that's not a message from God. Like, Holy Spirit, lead me. John 13, verse 27. What you're about to do, do quickly. Whoa, I, no, I, we kid, okay? That's obviously not a real thing. But it's easy to criticize that sort of thing. I'm not saying God can't work in those ways. He absolutely does work through things that we don't always understand or expect. But we can live in the extreme, which is basically living as if every little thing is God trying to say something to us or speak something. Or we can live in the opposite extreme where basically we have a, a belief in the Holy Spirit. We know the Holy Spirit is a thing, but we don't, really, we don't really live like he exists at all. We don't really have any connection to the Holy Spirit at all. And in that persuasion, we sometimes have a struggle relating to him really in, as a part of who we are. We relate to the Holy Spirit in that way, kind of like the gallbladder. Like everybody's kind of grateful it's in there and they know it's there and they know it's essential for something, but don't really pay much attention to it and probably couldn't find it if they had to, okay? Whether that is based on fear or misunderstanding or whatever it is, we basically end up ignoring the Holy Spirit. Friends, the reality is the Holy Spirit is alive and working in and on the life of every single believer. That's the reality. But that doesn't mean that we fully understand it or fully tap in to all that God has for us through the Holy Spirit. So that's what we're going to talk about today. The Holy Spirit can be hard to hear. Unless we start to learn how to sort of turn up the volume on who he is. One of my professors in college once said this, and it's really stuck with me. He said, 
Dr. David Tim said, there's no greater challenge in a Christian's life than being open to the leading and empowering of the Holy Spirit. It is a challenging thing to really fully understand. And in today's world, it seems pretty challenging to really understand the Holy Spirit and then more challenging to really tap into getting into a flow of leaning on and understanding the Holy Spirit. Now, maybe you're not yet a Christian. Maybe you're wrestling through faith or you're trying to figure out where you are. And I want you to understand today that the Holy Spirit is a critical part of Christian faith. It's a major, major thing to understand. Jesus talked about the Spirit quite a bit. And he explained a little bit to us in John chapter 14, the book of John or the gospel of John. I'm not doing Bible roulette. I have it already set. John chapter 14, verses 15 to 18. Look at what Jesus says. He said, this is his words. If you love me, obey my commandments. And I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. The advocate he's there talking about, the Holy Spirit who will come and dwell in believers. Verse 17, he is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because, he isn't look, because it isn't looking for him and it doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Now, those are the words of Jesus, okay? When we accept Jesus as Lord today, we are promised that not only are we just accepting some set of beliefs, the beliefs are important, but we are receiving and accepting the very power of God, the Holy Spirit, is given to believers to dwell in us, to live in our person. This is not some substitute or inferior being. The Holy Spirit is the indwelling presence of Almighty God Himself. Now, this is a huge deal, and notice... The underlying phrase that I had in that verse was the part where he said, he will give you another advocate. This is not a substitution. The advocate is just like Jesus inside of you. The Holy Spirit loves you and fights for you and, and wants the best for you and wants to guide you and shape you just like Jesus does. And he's with you all the time. He's never gonna leave you. Jesus said, I'm not leaving you as orphans. Now it seems unbelievable. But when we are baptized into Christ, Scripture promises us that God literally comes into our lives through the Holy Spirit to dwell, to make a home in our lives. And I don't know about you, but I don't always feel like God is dwelling in me. I wish I always felt that way. Other times, I gotta say, I most definitely know that God is actively working. There are times when I am certain that it is not at all having to do with me, it is God. It's a pendulum that we wrestle. So today I wanna talk about what scripture teaches about the spirit and perhaps how we can really grow in depending on him and hearing him in our lives. Jesus mentioned a few things here and elsewhere that the Holy Spirit does and I wanna walk through those together, okay? First of all, the Holy Spirit counsels us. The Holy Spirit counsels us. That's one of his jobs. None of us have it all figured out when we accept Christ or when we're walking this journey toward God. In fact, we never have it all figured out. It's never going to get there. Sometimes even knowing what is true or, or not, like to really sort that out is challenging for us. Jesus says that when we're looking for the Spirit, when we're leaning in on Him, He leads us into truth. He counsels us forward. He gives us counsel, wise counsel. He's often referred to in Scripture as the counselor because that's what He does. He guides us. He directs us. In fact, Galatians chapter 2, verse 25 Galatians 2.25 says it like this. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. He is leading us. He is counseling us. He is creating a path for us and showing us directions in life as we lean in and build relationship with the Holy Spirit in us. That doesn't happen in isolation. That's not just some mystical thing. As you understand more and more about the Holy Spirit, we understand that it's connected completely to God's Word. Con completely connected to God's Word and also connected to Christian community. The Spirit leads 
through those things. We are led by the Spirit in the Word of God, not just through the roulette, but as we start to understand the Word of God, He leads our hearts. He leads us through Christian community to see things differently, to gain understanding, to guide our lives and shape us. But one of His primary roles, according to Jesus, is leading us into truth, to guide us in the directions that we should go. So as we pray, and as we seek him, as we look for him, God works through the Holy Spirit to lead us forward. Have you ever had one of those times where you're able to share just the right thing, come up with just the right scripture, or have just the right thought for somebody else in the time of need? I got to say, I, I, I've seen that happen so many times, hundreds of times in my life, not just through me, but to me. That's the moving in the power of the Holy Spirit guiding us with one another through his word and leading us forward. And when we depend on the Holy Spirit like that, we're led away oftentimes from the things that are harmful to us and toward what God's best for us is. Now that does not mean that every feeling that we ever have or, you know, every internal sort of you know, juggle that we have is telling us to do something and that's the Holy Spirit constantly speaking. Quite the contrary, there's a lot of times where we just have our own crazy ideas. Nor is everything that every other person says is from God is actually from God. That's not necessarily true either. In fact, 1 John 4 verse 1 says, Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the Spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. Well, how do we do that? How do we know how, whether or not the Spirit's trying to guide us or counsel us? Well, in complete connection to God's Word and in Christian community where we can glean together from one another and compare them all to what God's already given us. We can test every leading we have. Every time we sense God nudging us or guiding us in a direction, we go right back to Scripture. Does it honor God? Does it contradict Scripture? If it does, it's not from God. Does it coincide with what we already know God has given us in his word? Probably as a leading of the Holy Spirit to lead us forward. I love how J.D. Greer puts it about following the Spirit with the decisions that we make in life. He says it this way. He says, most of the decisions I've made in my life have not come out of a strong, mysterious urgings or tingly feelings or obscure revelations from the Spirit I have simply obeyed the will of God as revealed in the word of God and trusted that the spirit of God was guiding me in the process just as he promises that he'll do. Yes, the Holy Spirit is mystical and supernatural, but he doesn't typically work alone. He's in complete connection to the word of God. The counsel of the word and the counsel of the spirit, they work off one another, guiding and shaping us more and more into the image of Christ. So if, if you have no regular growth plan to understand and study God's word, to learn the word of God, you're going to find it very, very difficult to grow in Christ. And frankly, you're going to have a very challenging time ever sensing the leading of the Holy Spirit shaping and guiding you. That's like a plant without water. The spirit inside us depends, and solid, depends on and solidifies the word in us and then directs us toward Christ. In a few minutes, we'll be back to talk about how God enriches our lives through the Holy Spirit when we put our full trust in Him. Hey, Pastor Chris will be back in just a moment for part two of his message, but we would love to know what stuck out to you about part one of his message. Is there something that Pastor Chris said or a scripture that he pulled out? We'd love for you to talk about in the comments or in the live chat to talk about what God is teaching you through Chris's message. Before we come up for part two, we're going to do something that we do every single week here at Cornerstone, which is taking communion, where we take a piece of bread that represents Jesus' body and a cup of juice that represents his blood. We remember what he did on the cross for us. So wherever you're at, 
taking a bread and a juice substitute. Let's remember what Jesus did on the cross for us.
we've been talking about the Holy Spirit, the gift God gives every believer to live inside them, to shape them. And it can even seem unbelievable sometimes, but throughout scripture, we see that God wants us to really lean into the spirit and be led for our lives to really be shaped by the spirit that he gives us. So first we said the Holy Spirit counsels us. One of his primary jobs is to lead us into truth. Secondly, the Holy Spirit comforts us. He comforts us. Jesus said he will not leave us as orphans. Because of the presence of God within us through the spirit, We're never alone. There's never a time where you're walking through life just trying to figure it out on your own, not in the least. In fact, the Greek word that Jesus uses in this verse, in the original language, and that we read multiple different translations, and we translated it helper, advocate, friend, all those words. The word in Greek is the word parakletos. Parakletos, where we get the word paraclete, okay? It literally means called to one side, It's like bringing somebody under your arm and putting them next to you. He is with you. He is your paraclete. He never leaves you. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, he is with you all the time. This is not a figurative phrase. This is a literal thing, okay? No matter what you face in your life, no matter how challenging it is, we never go at it alone. The Holy Spirit comforts us as we learn to depend on him as we go through the challenges of life. And God knows there's challenges. Imagine if you had complete access to Jesus, like personally, like he's on earth, and you could just ask him all the time, get his advice, seek his wisdom. Picture yourself for a minute, sitting across the table from Jesus at your favorite restaurant or you know coffee place or whatever, and you're able to just ask him questions. Friends, that is exactly the arrangement we have because of the Holy Spirit's presence in our life. I know it's more challenging to to tap into the Spirit in us than to sit across from a table from somebody. But instead of speaking words that go through our ears, it has to be processed by our brains through our hearts. The Holy Spirit speaks to our spirit. Down deep in our souls, there's a connection made and he is reassuring us of God's love and of God's goodness and of God's faithfulness and it works on our behalf. He brings peace that surpasses our understanding. He gives comfort and peace even when the the circumstances around us, when they're not peaceful, peace can come through the Holy Spirit. He offers us hope in the midst of the dark days that sometimes we face and he doesn't grow weary and he doesn't get tired of it and he doesn't have days where he's not available He doesn't take vacations. He's always with us bringing the comfort and the stability that we long for in our moments of greatest need as we learn to depend on him. He comforts us. The Holy Spirit also convicts us. He convicts us. Remember John 16, 7, we read a few minutes ago. I want to read it again, but I want to add this time John 16, 7 and verse 8. 16, 7 and 8 says this. says, in fact, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. And if I do go away, then I will send him to you. Verse eight. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. Did you catch that? See, when we depend on the spirit more and more, he brings a depth of conviction in our lives. Some conviction is very, very positive. Like being like people who are convicted about a certain truth. They're convicted about taking action on something that you know honors God. We're convicted toward positive action. People often wonder why some Christians are so dead set in their beliefs. And there's probably a lot of reasons, but one of the main reasons is it's because it's way past a belief system for believers in Christ. The truth of God is Holy Spirit conviction. He's connecting at a deep level in us through the Holy Spirit. Conviction can be a leading not only into something positive, but the conviction that comes in the Spirit can also be a leading away from things that are not so good. See, the Holy Spirit is for us like a warning. When we're walking in a direction that we know is not a direction that honors God, the Holy Spirit can be sort of a warning for us. I don't know if you have these in your home or not. This is just a standard fire alarm. A standard fire alarm, you know how it works. Like you put it up in your house and then every time the batteries go dead, it is 3 a.m. That's the time, only time batteries go dead is 3 a.m. for some reason. And you'll be sitting in your house 
and hopefully there's not a real fire, but if there were, the batteries were dead or there was some kind of smoke or something, you hear. Maybe you're familiar with that noise, okay? Now, it's much more ear piercing here than it is there, I promise, okay? But as we learn to listen to the Spirit and we truly follow the promptings of the Spirit in our hearts, we are not only prodded toward the good deeds and actions on God's behalf, but we're prodded away from the bad ones. Scripture, along with the Holy Spirit, leads us. We're taught in Scripture that God's leading in our hearts is like a still, small voice. It's there, but we have to learn to listen. He's rarely going to scream at us. He will lead us supernaturally through the Spirit. And so we're, you know, we're tempted. We're going into some situation that we've been down. We know it's not a God-honoring direction. And we're going into some situation as we've been leaning on the Spirit and asking God to lead our hearts. And we get into some situation and deep down in our soul, like the Holy Spirit's going off, right? We get in that situation. We get words that come to our mouth, come into our mind when we're in some tempting situation. We want to lash back at somebody and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit. We kind of push through them and we say the words or we make the Facebook post anyway and afterwards, the Holy Spirit just kind of starts to... Now, he doesn't have an audible beep, which I think I'm very thankful for. But when we are depending on and leaning on the Spirit, He will convict us, friends. He will shine light on the areas where we're out of line, and His conviction leads us to repent of our sins and make the changes to be more like Christ. If we are willing to lean on Him, if we don't do what a lot of people do with their fire alarm, which is like stuff a pillow up against it, or do nothing about it, pretend like fire alarms don't exist, and then deal with the consequences. Friends, that does not mean... That the Holy Spirit is going to force us to do anything. We still have free will. We can shut him out if we so choose. I think that's why we're commanded in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19, this really simple verse. Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Don't put a muzzle over him when he's trying to guide you, when he's trying to comfort you, when he's trying to even convict you in the areas of your life. Listen to the Spirit be made into the image of Christ. If we truly want to know God's will and we really want to see God's blessing in our lives, friends, if we are really interested in being led by the Spirit, He will convict us toward our next steps and conviction away from sin as we lean on Him. Now, there could probably be a whole lot more, but for today, the last one is this. The Holy Spirit compels us the Holy Spirit compels us. I'm not saying that we're totally lazy or anything, but friends, left to our own power, we are not exactly a force to be reckoned with in this world. Can we agree on that? Right, we are not exactly on our own strength gonna do a whole lot. We need, as we know, the power of God. And the Apostle Paul was talking about his own weaknesses as a preacher, no less, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. The Apostle Paul says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. He says this, And my message and my preaching were very plain. Rather than using clever and persuasive speeches, I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. And I did this so you would trust not in human wisdom, but in the power of God. Now, whenever, and if anybody's asleep right now, wake up because this is relevant to this verse, right? Whenever you find me, Really, really boring. Really just plain. This is why. See, I could do a lot better, but I'm just trying to leave room for the Spirit, okay? I'm going to do an okay job so God will fill in the blanks. Maybe not, okay? I'm going to give it everything I got. But seriously, the Spirit compels. He's like gasoline being put onto the fire of our witness and our life on behalf of Christ. Not only does the Holy Spirit give us a desire to share the truth of God with everybody, but he also gives us the words to say, he says. When we need words, he's going to put the words in our hearts. When we find ourselves dry and not really interested in our faith, and we ask God to work in us, the Holy Spirit, it compels us to get set back on fire and get set back on mission. And when we don't, the outcome is pretty depressing, honestly. Back in the Civil War days, uh, author Andrew Murray, if you want to read some great stuff, all of his stuff is public domain. It's free now. But Andrew Murray said this, this haunting quote. 
He said, God has called the church to live in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the church is living for the most part in the power of human flesh and of will and energy and effort apart from the Spirit of God. Now, that was like 200 years ago. And I feel like it could have been written like last week. Nothing has really changed. Without the Spirit, we go along in life trying to do better, trying to believe more, trying to raise our family, trying to be a good person, trying to get things sorted out. And friends, we pretty much stink at it, okay? On our own, we can't sort it out. The difference is the Holy Spirit given as a gift to me and to you to shape us from the inside out to be more like Christ. And he is ready and he is willing to work in and through us. And when the Spirit gets a hold of our hearts, because we invite him in each and every day, we cannot help be compelled to want to be more like Christ. So what do we do with that? What do we do? What action do we take? Well, the Apostle Paul gave us some pretty clear instructions over in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. He said this. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, some of us need to like take a highlighter and underline those verses, okay? He's given us a clear contrast. The idea is not just about alcohol or something. He's saying that we're gonna be filled with something. There is a longing for us to be filled with something. And as we figure out how to walk through this life, we're gonna turn somewhere for help. We're gonna turn somewhere to not just knock the edge off, but to bring us comfort, to help us cope, to learn how we're gonna get through. And alcohol and everything else that you could fill in the blank like it, of course provides only a short-term reprieve. And honestly, there are sad and disappointing letdowns for any real actual help in life. But the Holy Spirit's not like that. The Holy Spirit, friends, he is your advocate. He's your comforter. He's your friend. Be filled with him. And at the very end of the very first sermon that Jesus ever preached, or that was ever preached, that was not Jesus actually, Peter was preaching in the book of, uh, book of Acts chapter 2. And Peter called people to action to repent for what had happened. And this is what it says in Acts chapter 2 verse 38, the very end of his sermon, this is what he says in the very first sort of church service without Jesus fully present in person. He says this, Peter replied to them as they asked, what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do with what we've heard? He said, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children, and to those who are far away, all who have been called by the name of the Lord our God. Did you catch what he said? That the Holy Spirit is a promise given to anybody who chooses to follow Christ. Every person has the opportunity not to live life alone, not to just try to figure it out on our own, but instead to make sense of this crazy life with the power of God in us. Unbelievably being led every day by God. He fills us with God's love. He fills us with hope. He helps us in the midst of our weaknesses so we're truly never alone. Friends, he's given us so much. It's unbelievable. And his invitation is that we would respond. Is that we would respond and say, you know what? That is what I need in my life. Now, maybe you're in a place today where you've never made that decision. Or maybe like what Peter called people to in the book of Acts. Today could be a day for you to be baptized. There's this picture in scripture of us giving our life to Christ being physically baptized into water, nothing special about the water, but welcoming through our obedience to him, the Holy Spirit into our lives. There's a promise that when we make that decision that God gives us the Holy Spirit, we'd love to have a conversation with you about what it looks like. Several people uh, this week have been baptized already and we're so thankful for how God's moving in our midst. Let me take a moment and pray for you and ask God to move powerfully, even as we're across you know, the, the internet and um, in some cases across the world from one another, the power of God is moving and he's guiding us. And as God is churning in your heart and calling you back to him, would you respond today to what God is leading you to do? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the unbelievable gift of your Holy Spirit. 
and how despite our lack of understanding and lack of really being able to to, um, slow down long enough and to listen hard enough to, to really tap in, Lord, you have given us the same power that rose Jesus from the dead, living in us through the power of your Holy Spirit, guiding and shaping and convicting and comforting, compelling us forward. Lord God, would you please, in a, in a mighty way today, as you connect us through your Spirit, would you please, Lord, guide our hearts? Some of us have steps we need to take. Some of us need convicted right now in this moment of sin. That if it just needs to come to mind through your Spirit right now that we need to walk away Today, say no more. I'm not living in this any longer. Others of us, no good. We know the good we ought to do. And we need to take a step. Lord, would you convict us right now in this moment of the steps we need to take that you know we need to take today. Please, God, lead us in that. And Lord, would you move in a powerful way among us? Please, Lord, uh, work through our hearts so that we can see more clearly who you are and what we need to do to have your Holy Spirit lead us into salvation, but into hope each and every day. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. We were so glad to have you for Cornerstone Online today. Make sure that if you did not text new to this number below, or you didn't take a picture of this QR code, we want to make sure that you stay connected and get connected here at Cornerstone. And so if you are comfortable reaching out, man, we would love to hear your story and get to know you and pray with you. Other than that, we will see you next time. We hope you have a great week. See ya.